It was about two years ago when the name Alana Rose started making headlines. And from that moment, I think every person who heard her story started rooting for her to beat the odds. Alana's story began September 14th, 2014. A healthy, happy baby until her eighth month. Mom and dad, Kyle Prettyman and Alexa Schultes noticed Alana would get fussy, wouldn't take a bottle, and then became unresponsive. Well, after a slew of medical tests and 46 consecutive days at AI DuPont Hospital for Children, doctors determined Alana suffered from a rare mitochondrial disease from a mutation of the BOLA3 gene. There is no cure. Doctors would only be able to treat Alana's symptoms, along, among them seizures, some for minutes at a time. Alana's swallowing was also too weak to eat food, so she had a feeding tube. Despite the prognosis, Kyle and Alexa held on to hope. And what a milestone when baby Alana reached her first birthday. It was the day doctors didn't think she would live to see, but in the months that followed, Alexa and Kyle suffered along with Alana as they watched her condition deteriorate. And then on December 16th, 2015, Alana's brave fight ended. Now, despite the unimaginable pain that Kyle and Alexa have gone through, they have vowed to make a difference in the lives of families who are going through similar situations. And we are honored to welcome Alexa back to Delmarva Life today along with Lania Peterson with Painting with a Twist. Alexa, Lania, thank you so much for Absolutely. coming in. This thank afternoon. you for having us again. Okay, so first of all, um, how are you? I know when we were, we were telling Alana's story, that had to have been tough. Yeah, you know, it is always harder to hear her story, to see her pictures. Um, it, it's always hard, you know. Talking about it gives me joy, it gives me hope, and makes me feel like her life has a purpose. And I, I know it does, but when I talk about it, it I, I like to talk about it. But when I hear it and see it, you know, it definitely uh, yeah. just brings back a lot of emotions. <laughs> So first off, thank you so much for being in here and telling your story, as difficult as it is. Thank you for having me. But you said you like celebrating the joy, so tell mm -hmm. us about your little girl. Well, um, she, she was perfect. Um, it's, it's hard to, honestly, it's hard to kind of think of more of the good parts of her life because it was shadowed by so many painful and hard parts of the journey that we've been through. Um, but she was always happy. Uh, even through her sickness, she smiled. She was able to light up the room. Um, when she smiled at you and looked at you, it was like she was looking into your soul. It, it was captivating. Um, she touched the lives of so many uh, when, she was, when she was well, when she was sick, and I think even more so after she passed away. Um, and the hardest part about her whole journey was a lot of people didn't know the severity of it, uh, saying, oh, I hope she gets better, and, you know, just all of those positive remarks, and it was hard to take, and it was hard to, uh, you know, hear those, because we knew that there was no good outcome uh, of her illness. So. And, and, and during Alana's battle, you saw plenty of other families who were going through the same thing. Um, for those who don't know, what kind of uh, struggles come up? Well. I think it's a little bit different for everybody, but the similarities have to be the daily uncertainty, uh, the dependency that your child has on you, um, you know, because you're their ultimate decision maker. You know, you're the one who is telling the doctors that, yeah, go ahead and do that, or yes, you can do these tests, and um, just so many more decisions that you have to make on a daily basis, and um, not only the emotional part of dealing with a child that's it's a dying. Um, you have the financial stressors. I mean, where else are you supposed to be besides beside your child in the hospital? And unfortunately, we were walking on the wing of Four East where we stayed for countless days, and we saw so many children that were alone, that were being rocked by the volunteers of Child Life, and um, that were crying and you know being just cared by the the staff and. We didn't really understand that, like how could they not be with their child? And it was soon that we found out that most of those families are dealing with like a financial struggle, like or they have other kids to take care of, um, and they just physically cannot be there with their child. And um, so we saw that void in the hospital, and uh, we just knew we'd had to do something about it. <laughs> so throughout all this, you decided to come up with the Alana Rose Foundation. Mm -hmm. What does the foundation do? 
Well, we work with uh, about a group of eight social workers at AI DuPont. Um, a social worker helped us initially find the funds and helped us kind of with the financial planning of being in the hospital and how to, um, you know, just determine how to make it through on the finances that we had. And so we work with about eight of them and they fill out intake forms on our website to um, kind of give these families help. So mm -hmm. we provide financial relief for families going through terminal or life-threatening illnesses with their child. Um, we pay a lot to Delmarva Power, surprisingly. Uh, we do a lot for their rents because when you have to pay, I mean, most of these families have electric that's about to be shut off. They have high bills that um, they may, you know, you can't even take your child home without electric. And mm -hmm. to raise that much money or to earn that much money is going to take for some two weeks, for some a month to have that money to pay those bills. So uh, instead of them leaving their child to go to work to tend to these bills, we pay them for them in hopes that they're able to stay bedside with their child that needs them. And last year, the Alana Rose Foundation helped several families, didn't it? <laughs> Quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I think we have the numbers here. Uh, what was it? 59 families oh received assistance. Mm -hmm. $18,700 donated. That has to make you feel good. Absolutely, and we've just continued to give since then, so it's on a continuous uprise. All right, so obviously you couldn't do all this yourself. Right. And, and that's where you come in, Lania. Right. How? Tell us what's going on here. Okay, so my husband John and I own the Painting with a Twist studio in Lewis, Delaware. Uh -huh. We do paint and sip parties and classes. But a program that's really near and dear to our hearts is called Painting with a Purpose. And what we do is we partner with local nonprofit organizations to do a painting fundraiser, and half the proceeds from that event go back to the nonprofit organization. Nationally, Painting with a Twist has uh, raised more than $3 million for nonprofit organizations. Wow. Yeah. And we have a painting here in the studio. Tell us about that. Yeah. Right. The painting that we're going to be doing at the event is called Love Anchors the Soul. It's one of many paintings that we have in our library. It's really sweet and inspirational. And the thing that's nice Nice about it is that you can personalize it with a message that's meaningful to you. So, what anchors your soul? Is it love, hope, faith, courage, family? So people can kind of make it their own. And you don't need any <coughs> painting experience at all. Yeah. Um, our artist Loretta is going to take people step by step through creating this keepsake. Well, obviously you're passionate about this. Why is this so important to you guys? Well, you know, we live and work in a wonderful community and we get to meet really great people and it's really been important to us to help other people. And um, we feel like through Painting with a Purpose, we're giving back to the community one painting at a time. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, and you have a painting event coming up. Tell us about that. Okay, it's at our studio in Lewis on Coastal Highway near Five Points. It's on Thursday, February 23rd. It starts at 6.30. Uh, people can sign up online, and I encourage them to hurry up and do that because there is limited seating, and it's a wonderful way to support the Alana Rose Foundation. Now, right. this isn't the only one you're doing. Or like the, only right. fundraiser, the only fundraiser, right, Alexa? Oh, right, yes. We have quite a few planned for the year, and mm -hmm. uh, we continue to have some more. We have a vendor event and a dine and donate at Hooked Up in Millville. Uh, we've asked local vendors to uh, participate and, you know, kind of get out there for themselves, and then we have a silent auction and dine and donate following. We also, um, Steve Hagen from uh, Off the Hook, they actually offered to um, hold our golf tournament this year at Cripple Creek, which will be on June 8th. Uh, mm -hmm time and details to be determined. Um, we'll also be doing the Alana Rose, or uh, the Alana's gift again this September. Yeah. Um, and uh, along with the flipping for families that we did last November that a lot of, um, I don't know if you guys remember that. Remember but that, yeah. At Midcoast Gymnastics. So we'll be doing that again. And uh, you know, maybe a couple little other fundraisers here and there, but those are kind of our main ones. Well, thank you so much, Alexa and Lania, for coming thank in thank and you. talking so about yes. this. Again, it is uh, Painting with a Purpose for the Alana Rose Foundation. If you would like to learn more about it or about the Love Anchors, the Soul event, go to DelmarvaLife.com.